VR is evolving. We are slowly moving away from the Nintendo Wii era and into something closer to what we pictured back in 2014. The transcendence of studios and VR developers to slowly but surely push VR into that next generation. Studios like Warpfrog, the team behind Blade and Sorcery, have been working and refining their game for years to bring us that AAA VR experience with the launch of Blade and Sorcery 1.0. Companies like Logitech are taking us past the standard meta controllers with the first third party controller for Quest and we finally soon might see, and I quote, new avatars that are more customizable and detailed than ever before. We have that and a whole lot more, so strap in for this week's worth of VR news. VR could be so much more. We currently use VR to access a three-dimensional space to interact with what once was a flat plane of entertainment. But I feel VR has neglected the fact that traditional forms of entertainment like movies, TV shows, apps and games can potentially be an even better experience inside VR compared to traditional screens. And that's exactly what the new version of Quest OS would focus on. We've all heard that Meta is now essentially lending out its software to other manufacturers to make headsets, but I think with the suite of new apps and updates we're starting to see what this could actually look like. Netflix for example is available from your browser and now you can access 2D Steam games directly from the Steam Link app. Mark Rabkin actually touched on this a few months back on how their new spatial framework would allow for more fluid integrations of 2D apps and this will mark the transition of having docks like this that transform into screens that could be anchored anywhere in your space. But that does lead on to something that is well overdue and that's augments. Promised early this year this was supposed to be the foundation of this new spatial framework and it's clear they've had some developmental issues with augments and according to Boz's latest AMA that's exactly what they had. We decided it wasn't good enough and so it was too held back by some system architecture limitations that we had it ended up feeling more like a toy and it didn't really have the power that we think it needed to deliver on the promise of, of what it was. Um, and so we made a tough decision there um, to go back to the drawing board and basically consider completely different technical architecture, starting from scratch, basically, uh, including actually a much deeper set of changes to the system to enable what we want to build there. So I think we made the right call. We're not going to ship things we're not excited about, uh, but it did restart the clock. Um, and so this is going to take longer than we had hoped to deliver. So by the looks of it, Meta wasn't really happy with the way Quest OS was. Clearly it needed an overhaul and I think that realisation means a new chapter for Meta. One where there are more freedoms for development. As well as Quest OS, recently we also seen several long term refinements to a few games. Bone Lab and Blade of Sorcery for example have been working on new updates and overhauls over the past few years. Blade and Sorcery especially has probably one of the biggest overhauls in VR history. Now I won't talk too much about Blade and Sorcery as I don't want to spoil anything but I'm guessing most of you have two main questions when it comes to this update. Is it any good and when is it coming to the Nomad edition on Quest? To answer the first question I've been playing this for the last few days and to be honest this is probably the most fun in VR I've had since my HTC Vive days on Gorn. The game has gone from a sandbox physics based sword fighting game to almost an RPG procedural dungeon crawler with dynamic physics based boss fights. The skill tree gives reason to each dungeon as you work your way through each magical ability. You have to loot and find valuables that you sell in order to buy health, weapons and armour. The story mode is relatively simple but so far provides uncompromised worlds and experiences that are difficult to find in any VR game. I think one of my favourite things is coming out of what essentially was a sandbox game you do feel incredibly challenged. I started with no magical abilities so going through each dungeon was a genuine challenge. My advice to you is take a lot of health into the boss battle dungeons because if you do die you start right back at the beginning. The challenge of this game is something Blade and Sorcery needed and I don't often find a VR game that I'm genuinely excited to play each night. But sadly for most of you, you can't play and that's because the update first came to PC VR. In terms of the Quest version of the 1.0 update, developers have mentioned that once the PC VR version is stable, they will begin the porting process for Nomad. This process is expected to take several months due to the extensive work required. While this isn't the best news, it's better they release something that's more refined and runs smoothly on Quest, as listing on the Quest store is going to be the main moneymaker. 
time, if you're looking for something to play, I've been testing out a load of free games from AppLab, and one of the ones I came across was a game called Sale. This honestly blew my mind. Sea of Thieves for VR with multiplayer for free. You can buy, upgrade your ship and pirate. It has dynamic PvP, treasure hunting, and a ship control system that is exactly like Sea of Thieves minus their seasickness. In time, this game could be incredible, so I definitely recommend checking it out. But let's rewind for a second. Back on the subject of Meta upgrading their operating system comes a change that is desperately needed on Quest, a change to the avatars. They have had mild improvements over the years, but they are still closer to the Miis from the Wii era than what VRChat has. Luckily, it looks like this soon could change with some strings that reference new avatars. The strings quite literally say, this app uses new avatars, they are more detailed and customizable than ever before. What kind of upgrades is still unknown, but the lag time between seeing these types of strings to actual tangible things we can experience in recent times doesn't actually seem that long. For example, the reference to third party controllers is already being shown exactly what this means, with the first third party control from Logitech. I didn't quite see this at the time, but I actually saw this pen a few months ago on LinkedIn. For those who do art or 3D design work on Quest, this is actually a pretty big deal. But what I'm more excited about is the potential inclusion of VR gloves to be full replacements to Quest controllers, but time will tell on that. Another accessory that seems to be building hype is these free aim shoes. Maybe that meta is allowing more collaboration from third parties, VR treadmills and shoes like this can be more natively compatible with Quest. Lastly, I just want to touch on the next headset after the Quest 3S gets released. With the launch of several new headsets with Meta OS over the next few years, it's getting slightly confusing what each headset will even represent or even be called. What I thought was the Quest Pro 2 could actually be something else entirely. But in terms of the competition for the Vision Pro, led by LG, sadly it seems this headset we were looking forward to has come to an end, with another round of reports saying it's almost certain this has been put on hold or cancelled completely. And I thought this would have been the Quest Pro 2, but more recent leaks suggest the Quest Pro 2 started being developed last November by Meta, codenamed La Jola. The Quest Pro 2, according to Meta's leaked roadmap, is a more ambitious project to what was previously planned, and would feature codec avatars and the same battery design as the Quest Pro. I'll be interested to know what you think about the idea of a Quest Pro 2, as the reception for the $1,500 Quest Pro didn't come off too well. Now, I'll leave you with a fantastic LEGO style building game called Blockworks, which I'll comment on three random comments with keys to this game. I hope you enjoyed today's video, like and subscribe if you did, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.